I recently got back from New York City and I wanted to highlight the dinosaurs on exhibit at the American Museum of Natural History. The American Museum is located at 81st Street in Central Park and even has its own subway station in Manhattan. The museum was founded in 1869 and is one of the largest centers of paleontological research in the United States. It also attracts millions of visitors eager to learn about dinosaurs. Now, in addition to the two dinosaur halls, the museum also houses the largest collection of fossil mammals in the United States, which is worthy of a separate video. The dinosaurs are found on the fourth floor and separated into the Saurischian and Ornithischian halls. But the first dinosaur exhibit not to be missed is found as you enter the museum. The Allosaurus and rearing up of the giant sauropod Barosaurus can be found in the Roosevelt Rotunda. First going on exhibit in the 1990s, these two iconic Utah dinosaurs showcase the incredible size and dynamic nature of these Jurassic creatures. So let's talk about this dinosaur, guys. All right, so this dinosaur is Ornitholestes. Now, look at Ornitholestes, and there's a couple interesting things. It's a Saurischian dinosaur. It's a little carnivore, kind of omnivore sort of dinosaur, about the size of a turkey. On the skull, which is kind of broken on the specimen, it probably had a little bit of a crest over its nose. It had good gripping hands. Look at those hands. This would be great for gripping things, right? Good running feet and a long tail. The dinosaur behind me is Claudiosaurus. And it's one of the um, oldest dinosaurs known from Germany in the late Triassic. And we can see based on its pelvis that it has the pubis pointing forward right there. That indicates that it's a um, Saurischian dinosaur. It's one of the very early Saurischian dinosaurs. This dinosaur is interesting because it's bipedal. I mean, it probably woke, walked mostly on these hind legs, but occasionally it would walk on the front legs. But this dinosaur is ancestral to the big, huge, giant, long-necked dinosaurs, like Apatosaurus and Diplodocus. This here is Allosaurus. Now this skull might look a little weird, and that's because it's been reconstructed. It's the original sort of reconstruction. You can see there's not much original bone with this skull. Um, so let's take a look at Allosaurus here. This is a, er, one of the earliest reconstructions of Allosaurus based on um, specimens that were collected by the American Museum. This is one of the oldest um, freestanding dinosaur mounts that was made here in the United States. We know a great deal more about Allosaurus since this mount was made, but it's a very cool mount of an iconic dinosaur. So here we are in the Ornithischian Hall. And we are looking at Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus is an Ornithischian. So, so how do you tell the difference between Ornithischian and Saurischian? It's all in the pelvis. So this is the iconic Stegosaurus from the Morrison Formation. A late Jurassic Ornithischian dinosaur. The big iconic plates for protection. And that pelvis, which is an Ornithischian pelvis. You notice there's, the pubis doesn't project forward. It actually goes, goes forward instead of down in the front there. Actually, the pubis projects backward. You can see where it contacts. The ischium in the back there. 
So this fossil right here is a mummy, one of the dinosaur mummies that Sternberg collected of Edmontosaurus. And it's not really a mummy, it's just basically impressions of the skin that are associated with it. But the preservation on this specimen is just remarkable. There have been a number of specimens of Edmontosaurus, these big hadrosaurs that have been found like this. So this is one of the coolest exhibits. Um, it's different specimens of protoceratops, different ages going from old age to very young. Look at that, that's so cute. It's the baby. So you have a good idea of what they look like at different ages, which is just really extraordinary to have that type of preservation. If you were to name a dinosaur, what would you name this dinosaur? Spanky. Spanky? Spiky. Spiky, I think that's a good name. Why would you call him Spiky? Does he have spikes? Where's his spikes? Right along his back? What would you name him, Zoe? You know what I would name him? One claw. Because he has one claw in his hands. Do you see that? Oh, yeah. That's what his name means, one claw. It's Mononychus. Can I call him one claw? And, and let's, let's get him, how big is he? Is he, is he chicken size? Yeah. Yeah, he's about the size of chicken, huh? Edmetonia, sorry, Edmetonia, which is a ankylosaur. One of the armored Ornithischian dinosaurs that lived during the late Cretaceous. Uh, remarkable specimen. Here is the famous tail club. That is a big tail club. Here, stand up next to it. Imagine getting hit by that thing. Boom! Wait, wait, you have, to, you have to stand up there and pretend to get hit by it. Boom! Ah! Ah! Ankylosaurus just, just bumped you into outer space. So this is Styracosaurus. Arachosaurus. Isn't that an amazing fossil? Lots of horns on that guy. The giant titanosaur gets a hall of its own in the orientation area. Its darkly lit skeleton represents a massive creature, maybe the largest ever land animal, and measures 122 feet long. It went on display in 2016, cast from original fossils from the Museo del Geologico de Jequia Ferru Gilio in Trilu, Argentina. So this is the famous um, 5027, AMH 5027 Tyrannosaurus rex fossil. This is the second Tyrannosaurus rex specimen collected by Barnum Brown. One of the most complete specimens.